Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you enjoyed uh, the excellent lunch. So we have uh, excellent speakers for the next hour and a half, which and the topics will predominantly be about pituitary and adrenal. Uh, I'd like to start off now to introduce our first speaker, uh, Dr. Ibtisam Baisa from Saudi Arabia, who will be uh, speaking about hirsutism workup. So I'm honored to introduce uh, Dr. Ibtisam. She is a consultant, an internist, and endocrinologist, and an honorary associate professor of internal medicine uh, at uh, Imam Abdurrahman bin Faisal University in Dammam. Dr. Ibtisam. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Oam and the organizer for giving me this uh, chance uh, to be part of this excellent uh, conference. Uh, this is my disclosure of relationship, and this is the objective of my talk. Uh, after the introduction, I will uh, explore with you the causes of hirsutism, and then the diagnostic algorithm and therapeutic options, and then we conclude. And we'll have case scenario if we have the time at the end. I would like just only to warn you that uh, some of the uh, presentation will contain some disturbing images, so my apology. Uh, I'll start with this. You know, hirsutism is one of the common problems that may occur in up to 15% of women in the reproductive age group, and the earliest report of androgen excess happened uh, bef uh, 400 years before century. And hirsutism in women is one of the disturbing disorders that can produce mental trauma and emotional anguish, and it can be cosmetic catastrophe. However, uh, rather than also, it is more than a cosmetic and psychological problem than disease, hirsut women are often some of the grateful patients to endocrinology practice. Defini defining hirsutism actually differ and will depend on the ethnic background and interpretation of normal. Because as you know, certain uh, uh, ethnic background uh, and commonly in the Mediterranean and East Indian women, uh, they are normally hairy, while fair-skinned Europeans have the least amount of terminal hair. And the differences in the racial pattern of normal terminal hair may be related to genetic differences in the five alpha reductase activity in the skin. So let us now review quickly the relationship between hair growth and androgen. As you know, we have four types of relation between the hair growth and androgen. The first one is the non-androgen dependent, which is the lanugo hair or villus hair. This is non-androgen. And we have the androgen adrenal, testicular, adrenal and testicular androgen dependent hair, which will result and differentiate the villus hair to a terminal hair and results in the normal androgenic hair distribution in both male and female. And we have the inhibition by testicular androgen that will develop into the scalp hair. So terminal hair, uh, defined as a stiff pigmented terminal hair, normally seen in men, in the face, chest, and abdomen. And the villous hair is a small, in diameter, soft, and fine, unpigmented hair that covers most of the body. So this is uh, the development of the villous hair by the effect of the androgen that develops from villous hair to terminal hair. And by definition, hirsutism is a result of an increase in the androgen production or, or and increased sensitivity of hair follicle to androgen. And that will result in the development of villous hair into terminal hair resulting in hirsutism. So the sources of androgen in women, we have three principal sources of androgen, the dihydroibiandesterone sulfate, uh, the dihydroibiandesterone that is derived from the adrenal mainly, and we have the androstene dione that is derived from both the adrenal and the ovary equally, and we have the testosterone which is uh, formed in the ovary from the ovarian secretion and as well the result of peripheral conversion of dihydroibiandesterone and androstene dione to testosterone. So one have uh, to be clear and not to confuse hirsutism with uh, lanugo hair, which is the androgen independent hair. This is a villous unpigmented hair which cover the body and that can occur in normal women as well and as newborn. As well as hypertrichosis, which is an androgen independent diffuse growth of body hair that is villous, prominent in the non-sexual area and diffuse. And it can be familial, as you can see in this uh, drawing of uh, family with uh, hypertrichosis. And it can result also from metabolic disorders like thyroid disease, drugs, and some systemic disease like malnutrition and malignancies. So this is a four years old boy and a three years old female uh, girl with uh, hypertrichosis. This is again a young female with hypertrichosis, 50 years old again with hypertrichosis. And this is a cyclosporine induced hypertrichosis. And the last picture is a cancer induced hypertrichosis. 
So hirsutism in women is divide, defined as an excessive thick terminal hair growth in the face and body region at the same pattern of and sequences that can develop in postpubertal male. Hirsutism uh, uh, virilization refers to the concomitant association with hirsutism and a range of signs that may suggest an excess androgen hormone in women. And that include the deepening of voice, muscularization, breast atrophy, frontal temporal balding, acne, oily skin, and clitoral hypertrophy. So while hirsutism may occur in male as well, but it is really very difficult to differentiate uh, the normal from abnormal uh, uh, male hirsutism. However, hirsutism also may occur in prepubertal children, and it can have equal consequences, equal uh, prevalence in both the girl and boys. And however, and this is also what we call precocious puberty, and if it occurs in this age, it's always, most of the time, indicate an underlying serious condition, like in this point, the adrenal carcinoma. So, in general, the causes of hirsutism include genetic factors like racial, ethnic background, physiological causes that uh, occurs with, in some pregnancies, menopause, and around puberty, and idiopathic or simple hirsutism. And this is a list of drugs that may result in both hirsutism and hypertrichosis. On top of this list, we have the minoxidil, diazoxide, cyclosporine, and even phenytoin may result in uh, hypertrichosis. Other causes of hirsutism, uh, ovarian androgenization with virilization that includes polycystic ovary disease, ovarian hyperplasia, and ovarian uh, uh, combined adrenal ovarian disorders, as well as tumors like Rukumberg and uh, uh, rhinoblastomas. This is a lady with hirsutism, have the classical features of polycystic ovary disease and insulin resistance, and acanthosis nigricans with hirsutism and acne. This is again another patient with ovarian tumor where she has a breast atrophy and hirsutism in addition to the other features. This is again a virilizing ovarian tumor showing also some of the uh, uh, signs of virilization. And this is another patient with virilizing tumor with the classical her, uh, uh, frontal balding and the significant hirsutism. This is again a patient with hirsutism who presented with abdominal pass and this is due to Krukenberg tumor. Other causes, like uh, the results from and, uh, adrenal androgen with virilization, and that include the congenital adrenal hyperplasia, whether classic or non-classic, and the commonest is 21-hydroxylase deficiency, Cushing syndrome, whether adre uh, adrenal ectopic or central, uh, and uh, also adrenal uh, steroid or testosterone secreting tumors, adenoma or carcinoma. This is a patient, 17 years old, with hirsutism, who presented to the emergency room with four days progressive abdominal pain and found to have adrenocortical uh, carcinoma. Hirsutism should not be confused with uh, male pseudohemophrodism or incomplete testicular feminization uh, as a result of five reductase uh, deficiency and androgen insensitivity. Usually these are male patients and they have the Y chromosome, but they fail to develop a normal male genitalia. So they may look uh, externally like female patients with hirsutism and they might be confused uh, in some of the clinics as a case of female with hirsutism. Other causes of hirsutism, uh, like uh, ovarian or adrenal uh, causes without virilization, thyroid disorder like hypothyroidism, pituitary disorders that include the uh, hypothalamic tumors, hyperprolactinemia, and ACTH secreting tumor, and acromegaly. And also it may develop uh, after weight gain or cessation of oral contraceptive pills. Other causes may include also malignancies uh, or metastatic even lung cancer. The most common cause of hirsutism in our clinic is polycystic ovary disease. This is the most common pathological cause of hirsutism, followed by the idiopathic hirsutism or idiopathic hyperandrogenism. Non-classic congenital uh, uh, adrenal hyperplasia, they may present with hirsutism, although it is less common, but um, again, it's easy to diagnose and they may present with hirsutism. Androgen secreting tumor, they are rare but serious disease, and they worth uh, workup, uh, especially if the patient fulfilled the criteria for the uh, workup as we are going to discuss. So how to approach a patient with hirsutism? A detailed history and physical examination is really very, very important in patients with hirsutism. So the diagnostic, go diagnostic goal of hirsutism is to evaluate and identify the most likely cause and to exclude rare pathological causes like malignancy, as I mentioned. History and examination alone may be sufficient to establish an accurate clinical diagnosis, which further be confirmed by the appropriate uh, laboratory testing. 
consideration to find the underlying source and cause of hyperandrogenemia is the primary goal. The important aspect in the history that we should focus on is the extent and severity of hirsutism, the age of the patient, because idiopathic usually occur uh, uh, in, in, uh, usually are around puberty and it is less serious. However, if it occurred in the Middle Asian older people, it may suggest more likely an underlying ovarian or adrenal tumors. Severity and the speed of onset also is very important. The faster is the hirsutism and the faster progressively uh, hirsutism and severe is a more serious uh, 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 hirsutism. And the use also and duration of uh, hair removal method and frequency is also important to assess the uh, severity. Accompanying virilization, as we mentioned, like uh, clitromegaly, frontal balding, all these may indicate an underlying also serious uh, underlying tumor. Menstruation, whether uh, the date of uh, the uh, year of menarche, regularities of the menstrual cycles, and the greater the disturbances of the menstrual cycle, is the more serious is the problem, and uh, one have to look for underlying uh, uh, causes. Weight, whether weight gain or weight loss, skin changes like acne, striae, acanthosis nigricans, other symptoms like abdominal pain, masses, breast discharge. Family history is also important, as 50% of cases of hirsutism they usually have positive family history. And I have to also to emphasize that congenital adrenal hyperplasia, as well as polycystic ovary disease, both they have also uh, family, uh, uh, can be also familial. Medication is self-explanatory, and we have had a list of medication that may result in hirsutism. Important aspects in the physical examination include the height, weight, and blood pressure, uh, whether hypotension or hypertension may to, uh, uh, help you to uh, uh, look for the underlying possible cause, documentation of the hair amount and distribution, and this is one of the famous uh, scales for hirsutism called Ferriman and Galloway scaling, where the hair growth is uh, really judged in 11 areas with a score from 0 to 4, that may score from 0 to 36. This is very important to assess the severity and also the progression and response to treatment. So it's very important to note of this. Any score above 8 indicates hyperandrogenism, and anything between 8 to 15 indicates mild hirsutism. Anything above 15 indicates severe hirsutism and requires further evaluation. And also normal women at menopause, they may also have uh, a few uh, hair also at the upper lip and chin, and this is normal. So if a woman has a hirsutism score of above 15, as I mentioned, one should always look for signs of virilization that I have mentioned that include uh, temporal baldness and the uh, oily skin, uh, clitromegaly, breast atrophy, and so on. And this is actually how hirsutism looks in the 11 areas in real life in the clinic. Uh, this is the 11 areas that you should examine and look for hirsutism. Uh, 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 alopecia also should be scaled, and we have different scales, and this is what we call Lud Ludwig grade uh, system for women, that you can grade the, hirsh uh, the alopecia, which is also important, as well as acne. As we have to score the hirsutism, the uh, alopecia, as well as the acne. Other important aspect of examination include checking blood pressure, as I mentioned, examine for the uh, thyroid, for goiter and hypothyroidism, galactoria, and also signs of Cushing syndrome, like thin skin, easy bruising, moon face, suboccipital uh, fat bad, uh, 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 striates, verbal striates, and acne, and signs of uh, uh, insulin resistance, like acanthosis, nigricans, and uh, hirsutism, or also abdominal examination for palpable masses uh, with tumors. Initial investigation, this is very important as the endocrine society guidelines also suggest, again, the routine evaluation of androgen level in women with mild hirsutism should not be done. Routinely, you should not do the investigation for people with mild hirsutism. Long-standing mild to moderate hirsutism, not different than family members uh, with regular period, there is no need for investigation. However, people with uh, moderate to severe hirsutism with some signs of virilization, they definitely require uh, investigation. And the basic screening test, which is reliable, is a serum testosterone, dihydroepiandesterone sulfate, and 17 hydroxyprogesterone may be enough to do in the initial workup. And the serum level of dihydroepiandesterone sulfate and free testosterone are usually uh, sensitive. 
Just only to note, the normal serum testosterone in, in women is up to 70. Anything above 150 to 200 indicates uh, serious underlying pathology. Free testosterone is more sensitive. Salivary testosterone also may correlate with the free testosterone. Dihydroibandesterone sulfate up to 380 could be normal, but as you can see here in the graph, it has variable uh, um, uh, levels according to the uh, age, and it is highest at birth as well as in adult age. Anything above 700 indicates, again, serious problem. And 17 hydroxyprogesterone normal level is above to 200. Anything above 200, you should suspect also an underlying cause. Prolactin and FSH and LH may be uh, recommended if you have menstrual irregularities. So if you diagnose polycystic ovary disease based on the clinical scenario, which is the most common cause, whether you use uh, whatever criteria you use, other additional tests, they will have uh, an elevated LH to FSH ratio. They may have mild elevated testosterone, dihydroabendosterone sulfate, mild elevation of prolactin. You should also check fasting blood glucose and or do oral glucose tolerance test if it is normal, fasting lipid, and also sometimes insulin may be checked, uh, and that may indicate insulin resistant if you have a high ratio insulin to glucose cause ratio. Additional investigation like ultrasound may be helpful. However, I have to note that a normal appearance of ultrasound does not rule out polycystic ovary disease. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia is the second most common cause, and uh, the 21 hydroxylase is the commonest of which, and it usually is uh, diagnosed by measuring 17 hydroxyprogesterone concentration. And the concentration actually depends on the uh, uh, deficiency uh, status and uh, any level above 200 may indicate congenital adrenal hyperplasia, and usually the 17-hydroxyprogesterone uh, uh, can be stimulated by uh, short ACTH, and the level usually goes above 1,000, and that makes the diagnosis of congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Additional investigation depends on the uh, clinical presentation. If you suspect Cushing, then you do the dexamethasone suppression test, free cortisol, and radiological evaluation. and pelvic ultrasound uh, to detect uh, ovarian uh, tumors or CT scan and MRI may also helpful to uh, diagnose adrenal or ovarian cancers. Sometimes those if radiological investigation fail to show, laparoscopy and laparotomy may be indicated if especially the patient has significantly elevated testosterone. Additional investigation, if you fail to find the source of uh, 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 high severely elevated testosterone in a patient with severe hirsutism, then ovarian or adrenal sampling may be helpful, selective angiography, and karyotype may be indicated in people with pseudohemophrodism. So some clues to the diagnosis of hirsutism that may help uh, the uh, physician in the clinic. If you have an idiopathic uh, if you have an idiopathic, sorry, if you have a uh, benign or idiopathic hirsutism, usually it occurs in the prepubertal age, usually in, is non-progressive with family history and with regular menstrual cycle and no abnormality. Polycystic ovary disease is usually uh, from the clinical presentation and lab investigation showed mild uh, increase in prolactin as well, mild elevation in testosterone, usually below 150 uh, nanogram with increase in the LH-FSH ratio. Ovarian carcinoma is, or tumors is diagnosed by elevation of the high uh, testosterone above 150, and adrenal tumor, usually you get dihydroabendosterone sulfate above 700. And congenital adrenal hyperplasia, as I uh, discussed with you earlier, usually it's above 200, and the 17-hydroxyprogesterone uh, gets stimulated to above 1,000 with a short ACTH stimulation. Medication is self-explanatory. So treatment, one should be rational with the treatment and should individualize the treatment. And the treatment actually will uh, vary from observation, medical treatment, weight loss, surgery, or physical and chemical hair removal. And actually, that will depend on the underlying cause and the patient desire, whether they desire fertility, they want to treat hirsutism, acne, obesity, or irregular period, or even all of them. The goal of treatment is to slow or stop the hair growth for cosmetic reason, ameliorate the underlying cause, and also prevent potential serious complications like with polycystic ovary disease like diabetes, hypertension, and cardiac disease, and uh, probably also treat the underlying cause if possible. This is the treatment with non-pharmacological therapy, weight loss, hair removal, uh, with shaving or chemical uh, uh, or bleaching, uh, and also with electrolysis and laser treatment. 
This is a list of uh, drugs that may be used uh, medically to treat hirsutism, and uh, usually it's oral contraceptive pill and anti-androgen treatment uh, on top of the commonly used drug is the cybrotron, acetate, and spironolactone. Combination of oral contraceptive and anti-androgen usually is the most effective in the treatment of hirsutism. Patients should be warned that they don't get usual response before three to six months. They have to wait three to six months. And uh, the treatment uh, score uh, should be also assessed to uh, judge the response to treatment. And usually, if they don't go to another modality of treatments like laser treatment, most of the time they require treatment for a longer period of time. And if pregnancy is desired or they get pregnant, the treatment should be stopped. So this is a quick algorithm to show you how to approach a patient with hirsutism. Uh, first of, uh, thing is you have to uh, assist patient uh, uh, fertility and seeking fertility. If seeking fertility, then you should delay treatment. And if they have no, no not seeking fertility and the hirsutism is mild, usually treat topically. However, if the hirsutism is symptomatic with moderate to severe hirsutism, the treatment is with combination oral contraceptive pill and cybrotron acetate or aldactone. Uh, sorry, can I go back to these slides or finished? Can I give you, yeah, two minutes or three minutes more. So uh, if you suspect also, if the patient has uh, polycystic ovary disease, metformin will be helpful. Congenital adrenal hyperplasia, uh, if the patient is symptomatic, they don't need treatment. But if they are symptomatic, the treatment is with steroid and uh, with oral contraceptive pill and anti -adrogen. Treat the underlying cause, stop medication, and remove tumor if the patient has underlying tumor. This is a patient before and after androgen secreting tumor removal, and this is a big ovarian uh, tumor. And also, uh, indication for uh, good response to treatment is reduced time of uh, removal of hair and scoring system. Psychological aspect should always be addressed in people with hirsutism because that may be disturbing. And patients should be referred from primary care, uh, care to another or secondary or tertiary care center if they have sudden onset severe hirsutism, as we mentioned, with virilization. And if they have very high testosterone, dehydroabendosterone sulfate, or 17-hydroxyprogesterone, or they fail to respond to the first-line therapy. So I'll just end in one minute with a quick case scenario. This is a 61 years old male, uh, female patient, most menopausal. Uh, she was before having a polycystic ovary disease uh, uh, and treated medically uh, and um, uh, she presented with two years progressive hirsutism with markedly elevated serum testosterone and she has boldness deepening of voice and she has uh, male pattern uh, boldness as I mentioned her serum testosterone is above 500 the rest of examination was normal her CT scan Two years ago, showed uh, only a small cyst, left ovarian cyst, and the recent ultrasound did not show any abnormality. So maybe you can raise your hand. How many of you think that this patient has a serious problem and she, she needs further evaluation? How many of you think that this patient problem is related to polycystic ovary disease and no need for evaluation? So I think the majority got it right. This patient had MRI, which revealed an ovarian mass. So this is a hyperandrogenism after menopause, which is rare and requires careful evaluation. Diagnosis here, this patient had a relapsing hirsutism. Initially, it was because of polycystic ovary disease. And now the patient presents with ovarian secreting tumor. And you may ask this question whether there is any relation between polycystic ovary disease and, poly uh, and cancer, ovarian cancer. There are conflicting results. So, uh, uh, hirsutism is a common problem, and you don't need to do evaluation for people with mild hirsutism. However, with moderate to severe, you need to do that. So I don't think we have time to maybe uh, review this. Can I go over this quickly? So this is in one slide. I will summarize whatever I have said. If you have a patient with hair growth, history and examination is important. If they have mild hirsutism, symptomatic treatment. If they have hypertrichosis, again, symptomatic treatment. If they have severe hirsutism or moderate, then you assess for virilization. If they have virilization, testosterone is high, you should rule out ovarian tumor. If dihydroabendosterone is uh, high, you rule adrenal tumor. No virilization, menstrual cycle. If it is abnormal, uh, check thyroid function test, treat hypothyroidism if there. If not, then check prolactin. If it is elevated, maybe polycystic ovary disease, or uh, prolactinoma you need to rule out and treat. If then the period is regular or irregular uh, with normal TFT and prolactin, check testosterone. And if it is elevated, then you should also consider anovulation if it is mild or if it is high, you rule out ovarian tumors. If 17-hydroxyprogesterone is elevated, then you should rule out congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Again, if other causes, you should evaluate uh, accordingly. With that, I would like to thank you, and we'll have the question at the end of the
discussion. Thank you. Thank you.